Mike Brown, 250th this weekend. Um, clearly, you've known him for a long, long time. Man, from boy to man. Um, mate, what have you got to say about him? Oh, an admission, first of all, <laughs> that uh, when I first saw, saw him in uh, Aldershot, um, I wasn't 100% sure. And you'd like to think that you can sort of form a view quite quickly, or I do, about who I think can do what, where, when. And he looked a bit of a miserable, surly git. Oh, hasn't changed. And hasn't changed, yeah. <laughs> and wasn't quite sure about it all. But, yeah, I mean, just unbelievable uh, attitude to maximise what it is that he can be and just incredibly driven. Um, somebody doubts he can jump a bar, yeah. then uh, you just look out because he will jump that bar. And his attention to detail, once he has uh, uh, clarity of what it is that's required, uh, and the number of times, you know, what else have I got to do to get in the, in the England side? I'm playing well for the Harlequins, and it seems a long time ago now yeah. since they were ignoring him steadfastly. You know, ranging from you're not quick enough, oh, my times are just as good, and they need to be this, or well, what about your kicking, or what about your one on one tackling going yeah. back to those days? And I guess probably all the disappointments, Hugo, that he's had in terms of uh, not being picked when he probably should have been yeah. has made him a more complete player and has made him a 50 cap player for England. You know, when you go and play for England, you want to think that it's not just a one off and that you're going to get many caps and he was a pretty complete player when he first first went. Mate, um, lots of people know who Mike Brown is but not lots of people know a lot about him unfortunately. Mm. Um, how would you describe him? Because I've played with him 150 odd games and he's a pain in the ass most of the time but there's a yeah, lot more but, to him yeah, than Yeah but off the pitch very um, shy, engaging, personable, caring, all of those words. If you treat Michael on a personal level the way that uh, he expects to be treated, you get an awful lot back. He just doesn't suffer fools gladly, really. Yeah. And he doesn't suffer situations that are not tolerable gladly. And sometimes, you know, there's, there's probably as an, as an over, uh, overkill in terms of his reaction to certain things, but that's the, um, that's the competitiveness of yeah. him on us coming out. He's an amazingly competitive man. He certainly is, mate. And with Mike Brown, Chris Robshaw signed his uh, long-term extension. I mean, two obviously massive cogs for Harlequins. Yeah. You must be yeah. thrilled to pieces. Yeah, totally different uh, in a lot of ways, but similar in terms of their sheer drive and desire to be the best they possibly can be. Chris is like that too. I remember talking to Chris on the veranda up at um, uh, Roehampton. What else have I got to do to get in the team when he couldn't get into the first team, you know? And he would just offer to do anything, anything that could possibly help and enhance his opportunity. Can't catch restarts as usual. Yeah, right, yeah. okay, I'll go and catch the restarts. Right. I'll do that job for you. Well, who's going to chase the restart? I'll do that. And I noticed even coming out the World Cup, bless him, he, he put his hand up to chase the restarts I saw for England meaningfully during the start of the competition. He's a lovely, lovely man and uh, stands for, again, everything that's so right about this club and just hopefully... God willing, he's, he's going to be here for many, many more years to come because it's a good place with him around. Good man. Thanks a lot, John. Pleasure. Cheers, Absolute mate. pleasure.